This is how to take a regular item and turn it into a multiple selection item. So say I have a muffin here, I want to click that one muffin and then choose between the type of muffin inside rather than list out every individual muffin on its own over here. So to do this, we need to create three things. We need the item itself, which you may already have, in which case we'll simply modify that. Then we need a modifier group and then the individual modifiers. So the item is of course the main item we see on our menu screen. The modifier group is this muffin group that holds the two modifiers, which are the types of muffins. Okay, the first thing we need to do is go to menus. And if you're not seeing that, you can hover over it or you can just click these three bars up here to make it display. Once you're in menus, you'll have a few options that you can do this in all of these areas, the menu builder, the edit menus, and the advanced properties will all get you to the right place. We're gonna use the new menu builder. It is their latest UI that's got all the pictures here. It's just displayed a little bit more modern-ish, I guess. On the left-hand side, you'll see all of your menus, and then within each menu are the menu groups. I'm gonna go to food, and then the pastries menu group. And scrolling down here, we can see all of the items that we currently have programmed into this menu group. So we're basically going to mimic what we have here on this pumpkin bread item. So right now, pumpkin bread is just a regular old item. It's got a base price of four bucks, and that's it. No modifier groups or anything. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually going to change this and name the item bread. I'm gonna save that, and then I'm gonna come down here to the menu or the modifier groups section. And I'm gonna say, hey, add new modifier group. I'm gonna entitle this bread. And then we can either do no charge and every modifier in here will just take the base price and not add anything to it. Or if we have some that are more expensive than others, then we can click unique price. And actually let's just do unique price because I can leave the price zero if the items stay the same price as the base item. So down here in the modifier section, I'm gonna add pumpkin. I'm gonna add zucchini, is that how you spell it? Probably not. And then I'm going to add banana. And I'm gonna leave the price over here on the modifiers themselves as zero. So they'll inherit the $4 from the item and not add anything to it. If your banana bread costs $4.25, then you can add 25 cents there and it will add that to the $4. There are additional settings down here, modifier group settings, selecting a modifier from this group is, and I'm gonna require it. I want folks to actually specify which type of bread they are purchasing. And then if you allow for it, you can select more than one modifier, but we're not going to. We want each modifier to denote a new item. And then down here we have channel visibility. So if you currently do not have these and you're just creating the item or the modifiers, you can toggle these off until they are in stock. I'm going to click save. Now I'm gonna show you the other view that I use a lot too. This advanced properties is kind of the older way to look at advanced properties on all our menus and menu groups and items. And you can toggle open all these things and down here we can see that we've got bread, we've got the modifier group, and then we've got the options. Sometimes this is an easier way for me to visualize and look through things and make changes or go into items, I can sometimes find them easier here. Okay, I hope that has been helpful for you. If it has, please click like on the video, subscribe to the channel. I've got a bunch of tech tutorials like this up here that you can browse around and check out. Several more on Toast specifically. Hope you have a great one and goodbye.